What's up? I'm on part two of the KonMari paper section of my classroom and surprisingly I feel like it's going very well. The purge part is what I thought would be the hardest part and it turned out that throwing stuff away was the easiest part um, and if you haven't seen part one it's linked down in the description. You might want to watch that one first um, where I threw a bunch of stuff away. Now is the part that I thought would be easy, which is the organizing part. And it's turning out to be the harder part because it's slow moving, which means less motivation. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. Let me just tell you how I'm kind of doing it. And... Yeah, so I have a box of file folders, and just in case you're wondering, they're one-third tab file folders, and they're just plain, like I didn't get pretty ones, I just wanted a giant box of them, and what I'm doing is, as I'm going through and sorting stuff, I'm deciding what needs to go in a folder together, and these folders can't hold a ton, so... If it's something I have a ton of resources for, I might section it out some. But for right now, this is working. So this is a unit that I do with my seniors called Making an Argument. So I have my Dynamo Letra Tag Label Maker. And it's super easy to use. You just use this keypad and type in what you want it to say and then hit print. And then use this and it cuts it peel the back off, you peel the little strips off of it, and you put it on the tab. And it's a lot cleaner and easier to read than my handwriting. And yeah, so I'm using my label maker because I have it. So I'm putting them on here and then I'm sectioning stuff. I'm still using paper clips or binder clips to kind of hold everything together because I really don't like pulling a folder out and it's just loose papers. Um, so I'm still using those, but this is how it looks. And then I'm going to section them off whenever I get a big stack of them. So for instance, this is going to go with um, my writing unit, or it could go in my British Lit because that's seniors. It could go with my graduation project unit. It could go with a research paper unit. So I have to decide where I want this to go. And this one is a hard one because it's one that I sometimes pull and use with other classes, but not always. One that might be easier would be like this one. That's for Beowulf. So this one is only going to be used with my seniors. So it needs to go in the British Lit section and that's it. So some of them are harder and some of them are easier to sort or categorize. And right now what I'm thinking is I could possibly fit everything in probably one of these drawers, but I don't want things to be so cram packed that it's hard for me to take things in and out. So I'm going to try and fill up two drawers kind of loosely, and then I'll have one drawer for construction paper and other kind of paper like cardstock and white paper. And then I'll have two more drawers open that I can use for whatever other things that I want to store, which I don't really know yet. Um, and if I can keep them empty, then great. Um, so right now I'm just kind of organizing papers. I'm still finding things to throw away. So don't think that like the purge is over completely because if I see something and I go kind of, uh, then I'm getting rid of it because that means based on Kavmari, it's not sparking joy for me or it doesn't have a use if it makes me go uh, on my face. Um, so that's kind of how it's going. And I have a stack so far, but all of that is what I still have to do. So I have a ways to go. Let's see. Okay. Um, I got a lot done yesterday. I have this whole stack over here. And I have a big stack here and I'm almost done with my sorting and now I'm at a really hard part. So this section I'm working on right now is difficult because 
don't really know what to categorize it as. Um, I don't want to make individual folders for things because there's not a ton of papers. Like if I make a folder for rhetoric, I have like one foldable for their notebook in it. And I don't think that's worthy of kind of having a folder on its own. Um, and that's because this is stuff I've made. And so I have it on my computer, so I'm not keeping, like, a lot of copies of it. Like, we obviously do more with rhetoric than just this one thing. But, yeah. So then I've got, like, some grammar or punctuation spelling worksheets that I've made that I could put together. I could separate them. And then I have some EOC test prep worksheets that could all go together or they could all be separated. Um, I have some things that we use for warm ups and I could label it, you know, bell ringers, but I mean, they're topics. They're like rhetoric, irony. So I'm just kind of sitting here sorting and trying to figure out what I should label them as because I don't want to really label it like things I teach. But, I mean, it's it's just concepts, concepts that I teach. So, I'm going to have to struggle a little bit here and figure out exactly where these things should go. Okay, this is figure of language. So, this is for science, what we did about the broad Okay, this is figure of language. This is rhetoric. This is similes and metaphors so that can go in figure language. Point of view. This is rhetoric. This is more assemblies and metaphors so that can go together. So only one pile instead of a bunch of piles. Okay, this is summary, main idea, and theme. These are grammar worksheets. This is a linguistics. Okay, these are rubrics. So I guess they can go here. EOC tips and tricks. I don't have a pile for that. Irony. Um, I guess include rhetoric. I have this file, so I'm going to trash it because I'm going to make a folder for it. This is more of grammar worksheets. And these are group checks. And I hate to throw these away, but I have this file. Okay, this is characterization. So I'm up here. This is point of view, which I already have in a pile somewhere here. Okay, this is about point of view. This is summary and main idea. Gosh, I have so many repeats of the same thing just in a different pile. So that's a struggle. There's a bunch more point of view. And this is race so to answer questions I guess I can go here let me just tell you what I'm finding that's the hardest to categorize and organize are like activities and like worksheets and lessons that I can use across all classes like my seniors can always use a review on irony but I teach it to my sophomores so it's one of those things that it's hard to, I can't just put it in my senior file because I need it in my sophomore file. And I don't need two files of it. So that's kind of where I'm struggling. So let's see what I have left. can all go together is EOC test prep okay it's just a big folder okay so many copies okay so I use this so I pull out a folder okay and let me see if this will even all fit in a folder together I have a feeling it might not. Uh, it does. And I'm going to leave it because it works good. Okay. So. When you pull it up, this is how it looks. 
and then you just type what you want it to say. So I want this folder to say EOC test prep. And so you see what it typed. And then you hit this print button. And this is what it does. Okay, and then you just push this cutter, cuts it, and then you just peel these little stickies off, which I can't imagine doing this without fingernails. And then I'm going to put it on the very top, like this, and then all of this stuff goes in there. This is a big file, but it will be okay. Okay, okay. Turn this off. Let's start thinking about how I want to organize the filing cabinet. I really would like to fill up one drawer or one drawer. But I'm gonna have to see. All right, so we're gonna start filing stuff because I need to clean off some desks. So I'm just trying to think about how I want to sort it. I want to have things I use the most at the front, things I use the least at the back, if possible. And this is the drawer that's like the best height for me because I can see into it. This drawer, I obviously can reach, but like I sometimes have to like stand up a little bit to like see into it. So I would kind of like to put things that I don't need that much up here. Like the journalism stuff could go up here because like I don't really need that. Mm, we'll see. So I have these hanging file folders that I've obviously been collecting. I'm trying to use all these first because these are the ones that match, even though they're ugly. So we'll see. So I'm gonna take folders, put them in here. Okay, I'm on the last part, and I don't really know what to do. So, I have all these copies made of, like, old baselines or benchmarks or EOCs or practice tests, and um. It took a lot of paper, you know, to make these, but they're great practice tests um, for students to take. But the problem is, if I sort them, then here's what the folder looks like. I mean, it just, it can't handle all of this. And I don't really know another way to sort them. So I'm going to have to brainstorm. I'll be back. Oh my gosh, you guys, I finished, I finished. So let me tell you about some of the things that I did that I haven't shown you. So the last clip you probably saw was me struggling with what to do with those giant stacks of assessments. So things I printed off like practice EOCs or old release benchmarks and baselines and things like that. I need those copies. Um, I did get rid of some because at one point I started making copies for to have a class set of like a practice EOC and then I guess I got tired of making the copies so I stopped. So I only had one story. It just felt kind of weird so I trashed those but here is what I decided. So they're too heavy to go into a folder because the stacks you know, are like 
this or like this one stack is like this thick and they're just tearing up the folders and tearing up the hanging file folders and so and so I just decided I was like I need something that they can just sit in they just need to sit in something so I had this crate not really a crate like a basket a plastic basket that it's really old. I can't tell you where it's from. Um, but it's very heavy duty. And I don't really need to access these much. I either need to access them at the very beginning of the semester when we do a baseline. Or a midterm, which is the middle of the semester, or at the end of the year. So really at most three times a year. And so this is a good solution for me. So I'm just going to find somewhere that I can keep this basket. I'm probably going to use one of the empty drawers to store it along with some other things. And I thought this was a good solution. And the only thing I did to kind of make it easier for myself is I did put a sticky note on the front so I can very quickly see which one this is because I have multiple. So this is a released English 2 EOC. This is the English 2 baseline from the years listed. Here's one that's a different year. Here's one that's a different year. And then I have some English 4 ones down at the bottom because I need those less often than I need the English 2 ones. Um, so this works out good for this and it's not going to tear up this basket. If I decide later on it doesn't work, then I'll change it. But I think this will be good. Here's the other thing that I did. I wanted sections um, for the filing cabinet because I do have a lot of things kind of smushed together. So what I did is I took this color paper. Um, so here's a full sheet. And this matches my decor, right? And it's not just construction paper. It's a little bit thicker. It's not cardstock, but I wanted something that's kind of thick and heavy duty that can kind of stand up to the test of time. And what I did was I stuck it in a hanging file folder standing up straight because I want a strip of it to stick out the top and then I'm going to label it. And so I kind of make my own little labels. I'm really only doing a couple because it's like either texts or concepts and then like other or like American, British, other, you know, things like that. So I stuck this in and I don't, if you don't trim it, then it's going to fold back every time or fold back when you open and close the cabinet. And I didn't want that to happen. So I stuck it in and what happened was I needed to trim this much off to make it just perfect to like slide underneath. Um, so when I did that, I ended up with a piece this size. So just a little bit shorter and your filing cabinet might be different. So you need to measure. And then... I decided what I wanted it to say and then I just wrote it and I know my cursive is terrible but I'm trying to I'm trying to work on it um, and I just went over it I did it in pencil first like I tell the students in case I made a mistake I'm not wasting paper and then I went over it with my sharpie and then I'll show you how it looks so this is how they look so you have all of these and so this one is for writing. So I just find the start of my writing unit. So it starts here with MLA format. And I just, sorry, trying to do it with one hand. What is the issue? Okay. So you just stick it in the front like this. And so now when you stand in front, I can see this says British writing. American and then others so like my journalism and stuff is back there and so you can see this back one it kind of scrapes just a little bit but the rest of them do pretty good about sliding underneath or just barely touching and then when I open it up wow I get all my little labels and they may get tore up over time but you know it is what it is okay here's the other drawer so I have text to teach um, concepts to teach start here and then all my EOC test prep stuff back here so now if I know I'm looking for Oedipus I know to go to this drawer go
go to text to teach and I can find Oedipus. I can pull out the whole file folder and then when I'm done, I can drop it back. And I'm so excited! Here's the problem though. I still haven't touched this atrocity. So, next is the paper drawer. Ooh. Next problem. My normal construction paper does not fit perfectly in the drawer in the file folder. It scrapes. So I don't really know what to do with that. Because this is perfect and I like having it sorted because when it's sorted, if a kid needs a blue piece of paper, they come over, they get the blue, they go sit back down. They're not mm, fumbling around. But then I also need to sort all of my Astro Bright card stock, larger size paper, things like that. So I want to get this done today. So let's think about so this is day three of this project. Um, you know, and technically day four, if you count the first half, but it's so worth it. It's so nice. Um, Cause you can tell I've got on four different outfits. The first part was kind of easy to start and finish like all at once. And that's because it was a teacher work day, so there's no one here bothering me. Um, yesterday, the kids came in. How dare they interrupt me in the middle of my process? But, yeah, so I had stuff, like, spread out everywhere. And I had to, like, throw it back in the container really fast and clean up for class. Because um, it was a three-hour delay. So I had four hours to work because I have first period playing. And so, like, uninterrupted. And then to get back at it so I'm going to show you uh, my solution to the pretty paper drawer and here's what I will say I'm not 100% pleased but in order for me to be pleased I would have to trim every single piece of construction paper and that ain't happening so I'm going to show you what I've done So let's take a look. Regular white printer paper up here because this is what the kids need the most often so I put it up front and then all of this is construction paper and I tried to use the same color folder, hanging file folder, as the color of the paper. Um, it didn't work back here but it works up here. Um, and then this is some paper that's like tie-dyed paper and this is just a little bit thicker than normal like white printer paper um, and then this from kind of like here back is like my supplies so I'm gonna make some more of the labels that I've made for these drawers to go here so the kids don't like get my paper but this is Astro Bright printer paper that I use for sheets that I want to really stand out and then I have kind of like lightweight cardstock and then as the further you go back the heavier the cardstock gets so then back here is like super heavyweight cardstock um, and those are things I don't let the kids use really like they're things I use for like making materials and stuff but so I'm gonna put a sign up so it says like student paper you know and then this can say like lightweight cardstock, heavyweight cardstock, or whatever. Um, I still have some room back here. The only issue is that big um, scrapbook paper that I had, like the giant squares of it. It's not fit, and uh, it's not going to fit. Um, I tried to, like, fit it back there, 
but then what happened was it started sliding underneath all the other paper, as you know, would have been a mess. So, uh, for right now, it's just in the closet and, uh, I'll figure out some other kind of storage for it because it's not, it's not made to fit in here anyway. And here is the best part of this whole thing. I'll show you. See this drawer? It's empty. Empty drawer. Um, the, uh, this bottom drawer is almost empty. It's got the extra filing folders and just some other things. So, I officially cleaned out the drawers. Um, and I went from three full cram packed drawers plus the drawer of construction paper and stuff to two lightly packed drawers that I can actually get things in and out of and see and like spread it out. One construction paper drawer, one empty drawer that I can use for whatever I want, and then the bottom drawer um, just has the hanging file folders, the extra ones like I'm not using, and some other stuff that's kind of bulky that needs somewhere to be. I might end up changing that, obviously, but for right now it's working really good for me. Um, I guess that's it. The only other thing that I really need to go through that's considered, like, files is, uh, in this desk. I do have one file drawer in my desk that has um, paperwork and docs kind of for the year. So I guess we'll take a look at that. Also, I know uh, this was cleaned off. This, uh, this right here was cleaned off. It was a stack and now there's another stack. Uh, <laughs> I can explain. So this is from when the kids started coming in yesterday and I had their whole desk covered and I had to like pick everything up and put it up there. But all of that stuff is going to disappear because actually, let's just do that really fast. Empty again. <laughs> so I know it looks like I probably just threw things places, but I didn't. And so I guess that's it. I cleaned out the filing cabinet, KonMari style, which means I pulled everything out, purged, got rid of a bunch of stuff, sorted it, then organized, then put it back in. Um, I really recommend KonMari style um, if you're trying to get rid of stuff and organize because normally when I go through everything, you know, like when I did my closet at home, you just go through and like pick out a couple shirts, you know, you don't like, you really don't get rid of, um, a lot, but you know, when you want to pull everything out and really have to think about it and think about making a folder for it and thinking about where it's supposed to go, it really kind of forces you to have that introspective look at your stuff. Um, you really have to ask yourself, like, does this make me happy? Um, am I ever going to really use this? Um, is this worth making a folder for? I wasted a folder and some um, tape, you know, the letter tape or whatever. So I super highly recommend that you do it that way instead of just trying to go through it. I would have never found that I had all these duplicates of things in different folders if I wouldn't have pulled it all out. Um, and now I have some more space and not that I need to fill it up, you know, like it's okay to also have like empty drawers and things. Um, it feels good. It feels good to be cleaned out and know that I can get to my stuff whenever I need to. So stay tuned. I'm going to keep KonMari in this room. Uh, I don't think that's a verb, but you know, next is, well, at some point I'm going to do closet. I'm going to do student supplies, which is up there at the front. I'm going to do my books, which 
God knows it's going to be a struggle. I'm going to do these books, which are like my resource and textbooks, and then, you know, do my desk. And that way I'll have done the whole entire room. So kind of join me on this adventure, and uh, hopefully you can kind of clean and purge along with me. It really feels great, and I'm hoping to have it completely done by the time I start the new semester so I can start out like clean and organized. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.